Hey, what's up? The year 1994. The activity, watching the Mighty Ducks again on VHS in a sleeping bag pillow fort with an ice cold juice box in your right hand. You think to yourself, ooh, baby, this is pretty sweet. Does it get any better? And then in that moment, your sister comes into the living room with a steaming hot plate of pizza bagels fresh out of the microwave. This was the best moment of your life. <laughs> you didn't realize it, but it was. Today, I'm gonna show you how to recreate just a sliver of it at home as an adult. First up, we'll need to make some tiny little bagels. To get started on that into a food processor, I'll combine 475 grams of all-purpose flour, 10 grams of sugar, and 12 grams of salt. I'll give that a quick pulse to combine. Then I'll grab 265 grams of 90 degree Fahrenheit beer and into it add six grams of instant yeast. I'll give that a quick buzz to dissolve because bagel dough is mega dry and we can't really rely on the dough itself to hydrate the yeast. Next, with my food processor running, I'll pour in my yeasted warm beer mixture and spin for 20 to 30 seconds or until the dough is fully combined. Of course, if you don't have a food processor, a bowl and a spoon would work great for mixing this. And I'll show you how to do that in much more detail in my one hour bagel video. I'll link to that down in the description. And once this dough has come together into a single clod like this, I'll call it mixed. At this point, the dough is combined, but not strong enough to trap the gas that we need it to during the boil. So I'll flip this out onto my cutting board and knead it by hand for three minutes. That'll be just a push and pull back and forth to get the gluten proteins to link up with each other. And after three minutes, this dough should be strong enough to stand up to a firm tug like this. If it tears, keep on kneading. Next, I'll drop this into a bowl, cover it with a lid to keep it from drying out and ferment it for 20 minutes. 20 minutes later, this dough has relaxed and gassed up by about 20 percent. That's plenty. We don't want a ton of gas in this dough and I'll show you why later on. Next, I'll divide this dough into 24 little chunks that are roughly 30 grams a piece. Then to shape it into a mini bagel, I'll degas the dough, then roll the dough over itself two or three times to get it into a tube-like cigar shape. From there, a quick roll to make it a touch longer and then I'll grab it and wrap the whole thing around my pointer finger. Then really squeeze it to make sure that it's attached. Finally, I'll put the ring on the work surface and roll it back and forth to make sure the seam is fully sealed. Without this, the bagels would uncoil in the boiling water. Now, these need a little bit of gassing up to reach their full potential, so I'll proof them for the same amount of time it takes to preheat my oven and bring some water to a boil. So I'll cover them with a sheet tray, heat my oven to 475F, then I'll grab a big old pot of water and drop it on the stove. 15 minutes later, this water is up to a full on ripping boil. So it's time to check back on the bagels. As you can see, these grew by about 15 to 20%. That's enough gas to help them plump during the boil, but not so much that they balloon up and collapse. Like these ones, collapsed bagels are quite tough. Over at the stove, I'll add in a long drizzle of molasses and whisk that in. These will give the bagels a touch of sweetness on the outside and help them brown in the oven. Next, I'll drop in six of my 24. I do this in four batches because these are gonna grow quite a bit and we want plenty of room for them to breathe. I'll cook these on the first side for 30 seconds. Boiling the bagels gelatinizes the starch on the outside, giving them that signature crispy but chewy crust. And after 30 seconds, I'll come back and flip over all six of these little bagels and then I'll let them cook on the back side for 30 seconds. Don't go longer than one minute here because that extra cook time will also gas up the bagels too much, making them overly tough and collapsed, just like the overproofed ones. Now, once these are boiled, I'll spread them out between two parchment lined sheet trays. I prefer to go with 12 on each tray because I found that gives me the best bake quality. If they're too close on the sheet tray, then you get light spots and overall we lose a lot of crunchiness. Now, I'll quickly move through the other three batches and three minutes later, I've got 24 boiled boiled bagels that are ready to bake. So I'll load them into my 475F oven and bake them for 13 to 16 minutes. And after 15 minutes of bake time, I've got some crusty brown bagels. Not only are these gonna be excellent vehicles for bite-sized pizza, but they're also legitimately good bagels. So if you wanted to seed them up and schmear them up, you're not gonna be disappointed with the result. Now, I'm gonna make a dozen pizza bagels today, so that means that I'm gonna dump the other 18 into a freezer bag for the next time I wanna feel nostalgic, or for when I want my breakfast to be extra cute. Next, I'm gonna need some pizza sauce, so for that, I'll drop my maiden saucier on the stovetop. By the way, they didn't send me this for free, I actually bought it, and it's 
very dope. If you haven't heard of Made In, they're both the sponsor of this video and the designer of professional quality kitchen products for the home cook. Such pro quality, in fact, that their kitchenware is used in multiple three Michelin star restaurants like Chicago's Alinea and New York's Le Bernardin. Over the last year, I've slowly replaced all of my old junky stainless cookware with Made In's stainless collection, and I genuinely love these products. I chose Made In because their entire stainless collection is made of premium five ply. That means five five layers of stainless steel on the bottom and all the way up the sides. Five ply has superior heat retention and very even heating, and it can go from the stove top to the oven up to 800F. This 10 inch saute pan is one of the best, and it's a total beast when it comes to catching a hard sear on things like steaks or skin on chicken, and it's great for roasting veggies as well. Plus this rolled rim design on the side makes for easy pouring without spilling. Great for pan sauces. So if you wanna check out Made In's stainless collection and all of their other very dope cookware, use the link in my description below and save some money on your order. Back at the stove, I'll add in a long squiggle of olive oil into my hot pan, then half a red onion that I've small diced, three minced garlic cloves, and a strong pinch of salt. From here, I'll jump in and stir everything to combine and let it fry for five minutes. And once that's been sizzled down and sweated until soft like this, I'll add in my seasoned crushed tomatoes. For that, into a can of 28 ounce crushed tomatoes, I combined seven grams of salt, 10 grams of sugar, a pinch of chili flakes, one gram of oregano, one gram of basil, and 50 grams of tomato paste. From there, I'll drop in my immersion blender and spin this until the herbs are well broken down. Of course, you could skip the stick blender here and just stir everything together. You'd have chunkier herbs that way. That's not my favorite. Now I'll bring the sauce up to a simmer, reduce the heat to medium low and cook for 15 to 20 minutes to reduce. 20 minutes later, this sauce is thickened quite a bit and can hold itself up when I pass my spatula through it. Thick sauce is very important for little bagel pizzas because it helps hold all the toppings together. Thinner sauce tends to just run off the sides because there's no outer crust to contain everything. Now to build these little pizza bagels, I'll cut six bagels in half and I'll try to do that in a way that leaves me the flattest possible top. If it's too slanted, the cheese can slide off during the bake. Next, I'll take about two teaspoons of this pizza sauce and spread it on nice and thick. And once I've got all 12 of my bites covered up, it's time to cheese them up. For that, I like straight up full fat mozzarella, but part skim would work or ooh, add a little white cheddar in there and that'll make it taste kind of like Chuck E. Cheese. Next, I'll drop down 10 to 12 pieces of cubed pepperoni. For that, you're gonna need a whole stick of pepperoni so that you can cut it down yourself. I prefer cubes over slices because, well, that's what bagel bites use, but also you can only get like one slice of pepperoni on each little pizza. That only does that completely covered the cheese so that it melts weird, but also one slice of pepperoni is not enough pepperoni. Behind the peps, I'll drop on a generous dose of Parmesan cheese. I like to go for the grated gravelly stuff over the feather shred because I find it helps meld things together much better. Next, I'll load these into a 500F oven and bake for eight to 10 minutes. While these are in there, you'll probably wanna set up that blanket pile that we were talking about earlier and get your movie going. And after eight minutes of bake time, these are ready to pull out. And as you can see, that's a freaking snack. Oh my God. These honestly look so much better than I was expecting. You've got a fresh crusty bagel paired with melty cheese and a ton of cubed up pepperoni. You get it. I don't need to pontificate here. It's a pizza bagel. Even when it's bad, it's very good. Great pepperoni flavor. It's a little bit crispy. Makes you want to boogie. Ooh. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite childhood snack is, and maybe I'll make it in a future video. I really hope you guys try these soon. Let's eat this thing. Ooh.